In this movie, you extract low poly models from the various high poly components you experimented with in the last movie. Open the file named column low poly.max. It's basically the same file you used before, organized for the purposes of this tutorial part. In fact, you can hide the column on the left, named column high res. You'll deal with the components on the right. Again, make sure Scene Explorer is set to layer mode, not in hierarchy. This will help with scene management. Enable Edge Faces mode using the F4 shortcut. You'll need to see the geometry in order to simplify it. Zoom in and select the column base. You'll start with that piece. First, it's best to make a copy of it as you need both high poly and low poly versions of the same model. This can be done using Ctrl V, but make sure the duplicate is a copy as the two models need to be edited differently. Name the copy Low Poly Base and click OK. At this time, the copy is still part of the high poly layer. It's better to make it part of a new low poly layer. With the newly created low poly base object selected, click the Create New Layer icon. A new layer named Layer 001 is created. You may need to resize Scene Explorer if you can't see the icon. Rename the new layer Low Poly. Note that the previously selected object is now part of it. Select and isolate the new object. In the Modify panel, take a look at how you can simplify its geometry. In this case, the modifier stack is still present. The object has not been converted to an editable poly just yet. This means you can make adjustments at the various modifier levels. For example, at the Edit Spline level, you could access Vertex Mode and delete spline vertices to simplify the curves. Or, you could even go down to the Shape level and adjust its interpolation. At the Bevel Profile level, you could potentially edit the profile to simplify the extrusion but that would affect the high poly model as well. Instead, you'll simply remove edges at a poly editing level. However, you can edit the bevel profile modifier by disabling the capping options as the top and bottom polys will be hidden from view at all times. Add an edit poly modifier to the top of the stack and go to edge level. Select a series of edges that you think you can remove to simplify the curves. Remember to use the loop tool to go around the base. To delete these edges, hold Ctrl and hit the backspace key. It is essential to hold Ctrl as the backspace key on its own doesn't remove the vertices associated with these edges. Continue making these corrections until you get a more simplified model of the column base. When you're done, there would still be a few adjustments to be made. First, change the object's wire color and unisolate it so you can see it against the high poly base, which you also need to unhide. You'll notice that the low poly model protrudes a bit in the center. So select those loops and move them or scale them so that they are contained inside the high poly object. This will help with the normal projection later. Hide the high poly model again when you're done. Next, you need to define smoothing groups to tell 3ds Max where to separate hard edges from soft edges. In poly mode, 
select all polygons and clear their smoothing groups. This will give the object a faceted look. Start from the ground up, select rings of faces that should be smoothed together, and assign them a different smoothing group. Do this in the front view, as it's easier to select the rings. The first ring is in group 1, the second on group 2, etc. Once you're done, convert the object to an editable poly and exit isolate mode to work on the next one. The object's high poly column, high poly column head, and high poly hat top are similar to the base object, so I'll let you work on these on your own. Just make sure you don't remove the caps on the high poly hat top top square object, as these will not be entirely hidden in the scene. If you feel like skipping this part, then you can merge the file named column low poly comps dot max. You still need one additional low copy model for the column hat. This will be extracted from the object named high poly hat object middle. Start by isolating and duplicating it as you did before. Make sure you place the copy on the low poly layer. And for good measure, don't forget to change the wire color. Since there's already a symmetry modifier, this will help you work only on one side with the results duplicated to the other. At the editable poly level, edit the edges to simplify the model. You can certainly remove the protruding ring as its effects will be handled by normal maps. Depending how close you plan to have a camera in that area, you may opt to leave a bit of geometry there. The choice is up to you. Continue simplifying the geometry by selecting and deleting loops using Control Backspace. Finally, select the facing border and cap it. Exit sub-object mode and go back to the top of the stack. Convert the object to an editable poly and adjust its smoothing group. In this case, the end caps should be on one smoothing group and all the other polys on another. Exit isolate mode and hide the high poly layer. That's it. All the low poly components are now ready. You just need to attach them together before unwrapping the texture coordinates. Double check the poly count by selecting all the low poly components 
the total count should be around a thousand polys. If not, you can go back to edit the low poly models until you are happy with the results. In the next movie, you'll attach the components together and unwrap the texture coordinates.